This is a video tutorial to help you navigate uh, around our Canvas site and get to our syllabus. So I'm assuming that, that everyone knows how to get to this um, Miramar uh, College main website. Simply search Miramar College and click on the link. Okay, once you're here, you go to Canvas, and I realize that most of you already, already know this, but perhaps some of you don't. You then log in. Uh, you then um, choose the class that you'd like to work with. So understand that what you're seeing is an instructor view here. I'm, I'm not showing you the student view because not everything's up yet, so you won't see it. So this will give you kind of an inside look at what's going on. So, so published courses and unpublished doesn't mean anything for you. It just simply means these are my these are my spring classes that were published, and these are my two summer classes that are not. Uh, 31311 is our class that has not been published yet, but for, for your purpose, once I publish it, of course, if you're if you're listening to this, it's been published. Uh, it'll show up in your in your um, in your courses in campus. Okay, so simply click on the link, and it takes you to our our course homepage. Uh, so again, I'm not going to show you the student view. I could do that right here. Let me let me show it to you real quickly. Um, it's just a little bit less, um, not as much stuff as mine, which is good for you. One thing that's really nice to have for the student view is the to-do list. Okay, so that that's that's a, a, a great quick a quick look uh, place to go to see if you're missing something. Film reflection number one posts on on June 15th, uh, so that's the first day of class, so it's already up there. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go any further because, for example, modules it's empty. I haven't loaded them yet. So let's go back to uh, home. And let's get out of the student view here. Okay, so here we are back. Okay, so this is just general stuff. My name, okay, our CRN, the summer session 2000. My name's Frank Turner. Most importantly, here's the syllabus. So anytime you need the syllabus for clarification, for information, simply click on, sorry, simply click on home and there's your, there's your, um, Syllabus. This is an online course, no classroom. That's my email. Contact me anytime. Uh, we'll go over the syllabus and class requirements first day of class. Of course, that's what we're doing right now. All, all this is done by video. It's all online, so everything you get from me will be a video. Always provided to you each week. Simply go to the module section. So again, modules is at the top here, right here, okay? That's, that's the go-to place to find everything that you need to know for the week. That's going to give you all the all the assignments, all the links, lectures, instructions, films, everything that you need, week one, week two, and so on. But there are two other places besides your to-do list that, that you have in the student view, okay? So you've got four places to go to find out when things are due and what's happening. So you know, the idea that I didn't know something was due is a little bit hard to, to accept given the fact that there's so many places for you to see what's going on. And course summary at the bottom of your home page is one. This goes through... All the assignments, uh, when, they're, when the uh, instructions are posting, pertinent dates like drop deadlines, first day of class, last day of class, and so on, uh, all the way down to the end. So there, there's an overview of the entire class. Another way to see a similar type of, of overlook is the calendar. So this will actually take you out of the class for, for a minute, but it's easy to get back in. From this left far left menu, it takes you out. Here's, your, uh, here's our uh, calendar for our class. Now, if you have more than one class, you can click on another class and they'll show up color color coordinated. You know, if it's blue here, well, for our, our case is kind of that, that tan color. Anything tan is our class. If you want to see all your classes at the same time on a, on a on a calendar, you can, or simply unclick the ones you're not interested in. This will show you just, just our class. Okay, to go back into the class, just hit courses and 31311, and we're back to where we started, okay? Okay, um, so let's go down from the top. So announcements, there's nothing there yet. Uh, there, there will be. I'll, I'll post an announcement when I publish this course. So by, by this time, you've already seen these, but that's where announcements are at. Uh, modules, very, very important. And um, they're not up yet, but each, uh, each week there will be. So let's just look at one for an example. This is not... This is not uh, anything to do with your class, um, as you can see, week of two, three, twenty. But I just want you to see what it looks like. You know, class one. I'll always do a welcome video each week. Um, uh, this is the intro week, so we're doing all these types of things. I mean, you've you've seen this already before. Um, 
of course, when you get deeper into the schedule and we start doing chapters, um, again, this is not relevant to your course, but just for you to see it, uh, you know, you'll have, you'll have, uh, you'll have film, oops, sorry. You'll have film reflection information here. We're going to do four of those. Uh, and then you start with chapters, okay? So uh, and plus film. So that so it's pretty easy. You just follow your class one in an online class. Eight weeks. Uh, it's class one, class two, class three, class four. There's four classes per week, essentially, just like you just like you would do if you were face to face. And you simply follow each class, okay? Um, Okay, so that's modules. Very, very important that you understand that that's where to go. Um, once I once I hit publish there, that means that it's up for you to see. Okay, um, it's not published yet because we don't have anything to publish. Assignments probably the most important thing, um, and this is all of them. Um, so we have definition assignments, um, chapters one through fifteen. Of course, in a fast track class, we're going to be doing more than more than one most of the time. In fact, only once we do three. So that's uh, that means your definition assignment for that week is is a lock. You're going to be doing uh, definitions for for three chapters, okay? So, uh, but understand this is fast track. You signed up for it. That's the way that it goes, okay? So we have um, we have a, a definition uh, assignment for each chapter, and there should be eight of them there. So 15 chapters in eight weeks. And please, again, uh, you know, mod modules week one will always have all of the instructions for all of the assignments. So instead of going over what a definition assignment is right now, go to modules week one and scroll down to what is the, what is a definition assignment and you'll get more uh, you know, details about what that is. We also have film reflections. There's four of them, two before the midterm, two before the final. Uh, and again, please go to modules week one and read what a film reflection paper is. These are personal reflections. These are not research projects. This, this is not go to the library and get three primary sources. This is a this is a chance for you to explain, express to me, you know, how the film made you feel emotionally, but in an intellectual way. So please watch the film reflection. Uh, what is a film reflection uh, tutorial in modules week one? Uh, so two before the midterm, two before the final. Okay, then we have midterm exams. Um, midterm exams, I believe, are open for three days um, as this first half comes to an end because it's fast track. It's going to be the end of the week. I believe it's Wednesday through through uh, Friday or something like that. The first part of the week is to finish up the last chapter. We don't have enough time to get them all in. You have multiple choice, uh, part one, essays, part two. Essays come from supplemental lectures. What is a supplemental lecture? Please go to modules week one and read the uh, and watch the tutorial. What is a supplemental lecture? And that will explain it to you. Same thing with the final exam. Um, final exams, one more day. It's just the way the schedule is. Same format, multiple choice, um, 40 questions, multiple choice, and three essays. The, the, the multiple choice for midterm and final, you get 40 minutes. That's a minute per question. That's That's not challenging. Most people get finish my exams in you know 20 to 30 minutes so 40 is more than enough time I can't leave it open I can't leave it open ended on a um, online class I've got to put a timer on it and the same thing with the uh, midterm exam part two uh, used to leave this open ended if you were in my class you know that but what I find is people are just take the opportunity to just write forever and that's not what this is I'm going to go into depth about what I supplemental lecture is, which is where your essays come from. They are essentially reviews of a lecture that I've given. So again, what, read those instructions, but understand that this is not as overwhelming as it seems, okay? Uh, most people that do well in, in the essays in the midterm and final exam are, are you know, uh, simple, concise to the point, and many times, you know, three quarters of a page or to a page is, is plenty. Other people write 10 pages and don't say much. So please, please, please. Um, if anything, in, in my mind, there's there's it's 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 not confusing, it's not complicated, it's not difficult, it's not it's not designed to trick you. But supplemental lectures seem to be the place that people stumble. And I, I as I as I ask people, you know, what the problem is, I find that they're not reading the instructions, they're not listening to to the 
do the steps. And, and so please make sure that you, for, you should do for all the assignments, but, but pay special attention to what a supplemental lecture is, okay? Okay, that's assignments. Uh, discussions, uh, in a typical 16-week class, I also have four discussion board assignments, but we just can't do it in this amount of time, so you lucked out on that one. So there really is nothing going on here. Um, I, I always encourage students to contact me through this discussion board so other students can see it, but typically nobody does. Uh, this is a form for you as an online class to reach out to your other fellow students and see what's going on, or you want to get a study group, or I don't know, you want to talk about what you know, a, a certain supplemental lecture, you just want to say hi. Um, you know, I'm not going to be monitoring this and, and scolding you. You can do whatever you want here. This is this is your form. We we have we have no face-to-face -face community, so we have an online community here. But please no profanity and no bullying. Um that 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 will get a response from me, okay? Of course, grades, um, you know, I'm not going to uh, click on it because it shows everybody. I don't want to do that for privacy, but th that's where you go for grades, your grades. When you click on your and grades in your in your um, on your page, it'll show you specifically your grades and what you get for each each uh, assignment. People again, open that. It shows everybody in the class, and you can contact people uh, that way also. Okay. Okay, so that is the Canvas page. I don't think I missed anything. Home announcements. There aren't any yet. Modules. Okay, Simon, discussion grid. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our home page and look at our syllabus right here. Okay. <clears throat> so a syllabus is, is, is somewhat of the nuts and bolts of a class, okay? Um, it kind of tells you everything that you want to know if if it will ever open. Again, there we go. Oh, I, I'm sorry. My, I guess I missed the first one. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so uh, it's like the roadmap. Okay, of our class: History 109, American History 31311. Again, uh, you know me. It's online class. Uh, June nineteenth through August eighth is our is our actual time. There's my email. Uh, no office hours, but you can speak to me live if you'd like to. And, and I say Skype, FaceTime, or Zoom. T truly, at this point, I'm pretty much just using Zoom. It's just the easiest. If you want to talk to me, I can send you an invitation, and you can click on it, and boom, there we are. Okay. Uh, so if you want to talk to me face to face privately, we can do it that way. Uh, a syllabus is always uh, subject to change. You'll be notified if there are any changes. I'm not going to go over the entire class description. Uh, please read this. Uh, you know, this is important. Understand my point of view. You'd like you learn the actual history. Get rid of the romanticized part. And we're going we're going through the you know early uh, history of the United States from the prehistory through the Civil War and Reconstruction. Um, when you watch the introductory lecture, you learn about social history and social historians and what does that mean? Uh, it means that the story is not one side and special attention will, will be given to include the histories of African Americans, Native Americans, Mexican Americans, Asian Americans, and women. Uh, my background is the study of racism and discrimination as well as civil rights and social justice. So that's the point of view that, that my lectures on my class is, is done in, okay? Student learning outcomes is really what's what's required of me. The the the, the uh, campus tells me that I have to teach you these things. Okay, that when you finish with this class, you'll you'll be proficient in these. So please read read all these. Uh, this is what you're learning here. Course objectives <clears throat> gets a little more into detail. If you really want to know what you're going to learn in this class, go through all these one by one. If you if you're interested in history, this this will of course excite you to no end. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, let's. What's next here? Um, so a lot of course objectives. Okay, so again, just kind of an overview of the class um, and and what you're going to be learning. Okay, please read all of this textbook. Very very important. Uh, here's the textbook, a picture of it. The ISBN. I know it's very very expensive in the bookstore, so so don't do that. Many people go to Chegg, Amazon, or Chegg.com. You can rent it there for less than $20. Uh, you can purchase these books on eBay, half.com, Craigslist, and there's a whole lot more that are popping up every day. 
uh, whatever your favorite place to go, you know, go to source to buy you stuff, try that before you spend, you know, uh, uh, more than a hundred dollars on a, on a, on a used textbook heart. Okay. So there's your information for your textbook. Okay. I'm going through this course. You, you'll be able to open this and look at it and you won't be bouncing around like I am. Okay. Attendance, of course, is no requirement. It's an online class, but a lack of engagement, it, it may result in a student being dropped. Um, after the first week, it's your responsibility to drop the course. If I get no engagement from anybody at all in the first week, they, they potentially could be dropped. Because I've got, I've got 10 people uh, plus that are trying to get into this class. Uh, these are two very important dates, and they are on your course summary and your calendar, June 23rd. That is a week and one day from the time the, start, the class starts. If you get through one week and you don't like this class, you don't have to explain it to me or say, I can't listen to that guy anymore, whatever it is, you don't have to justify it to anybody. Simply drop the class and it won't be entered on your transcripts. It's like, it's like you were never there. If you stay in past that class, I'm sorry, that date, you still have a chance to drop, but after, uh, after June 23rd, uh, to July 17th, you will receive a W on your transcript. So if you want to drop the class, you have to July 17th. Now, a W is way better than a D and an F, or in some cases, even a C if you want to go to grad school. So if you are, you know, not doing well or whatever the situation situation is, we're all challenged right now with being at home and staying home and everyone's work is different so i get it you know but understand that this is a this is an easy way out as as opposed to getting an f or a d uh so understand past july 17th if you haven't dropped i'm not going to drop you you are um if you stay past that time and you don't turn anything in you're going to get an f in this class so don't do that you don't want f's to come back to haunt you um and you might be young and think it doesn't matter right now but you know i was a person that did horribly in school when i was young came back you know, decades later and i had to deal with all that past so don't don't do that to yourself even though you think it doesn't matter drop the class just to get it out of your out of your transcripts of course be prepared do well how do you do that complete the all the readings read all the chapters complete assignments ask questions have all the needed materials Okay, assignments. So this is a little bit of a brief um, uh, dis description of each assignment. But again, for details, please go to modules week one, scroll down to what is definition assignment, what is a film reflection, what is a supplemental lecture, and so on. So number one, a definition assignment. As we finish discussing each chapter, it will be required of you to submit an assignment through Canvas based on the key concepts and events and key people found in the terms to know section of your textbook, found at the end of each chapter. Okay, that's a whole lot going on there. At the end of each chapter, the, the last part that, that, you, that you'll see that you're reading is called summary. The next section is the, is the review part. The first, the first section is called terms to know, and there's, there's a list of terms to know. That's typically, I'm sorry, there's a list of key concepts and events. That's typically two columns. And then on the right, there's a, uh, a, a shorter list of key people. You're going to, to define all, all, those, uh, all those concepts and events so, and, and key people. So simply defining each concept and event, define it from your glossary in your book. So I want you to learn the author's definition of these terms. Don't go to Google and search it because some of these terms are ambiguous. It might mean something different to somebody else. I'm not interested in someone else's textbook. I mean, we're interested in this one. So. So understand, go to the glossary. If you want to turn in your assignment uh, word for word from the glossary, I'll accept that uh, because I want you to get, get that in your head because many questions come directly from, from those uh, answers, okay, from those definitions. Key people are a little different. Uh, they're not in the glossary. Uh, however, there is a page number next to them. So you go to that page number and you tell me what's pertinent about what that person did on that page. So understand what I mean. Many of these characters uh, are, on, are in more than one chapter. Let's just say for fun, George Washington. He's in more than one chapter. He, he's, been, he's relevant in history for, for you know, uh, 60, 70 years. So um, what he's doing in chapter one is not the same what he's doing in chapter four. So if George Washington is a key person in chapter four, don't tell me what he did in chapter one. Okay, go to the page that chapter four tells you to go to and find that information and, and give it to me. 
to understand what this what this assignment is. Um, this assignment is your chance to to uh, get a study guide together. So when you have your midterm and final, you can refer to it. So all all, all these definition assignments are the best study guide that you'll ever find. So I would say keep these separate and have them readily available. Okay. Um, and another <clears throat> another uh, hint here <clears throat> on how to be a better student in general. <clears throat> When you study subjects like this, it isn't like a first run movie, you know, where you're standing in a line outside to get in and somebody walks by and says, I didn't, I can't believe she died at the end. You don't want to know that, right? Uh, you don't you don't want to you don't you don't buy a bestseller and read the last page to see what happened. But that's not the case with with history or or perhaps uh, well, let, let's just say behavioral science, uh, social science classes. You you want to learn all you can learn before you read the chapter. So one way to do that is don't read the chapter until after you've done these this assignment here. Okay, um, define the the key concepts and events and the key people first. That they're in chronological order as they appear in your in your textbook. Uh, so you're getting an overview of the chapter while you're doing your assignment. You got to do anyway. So once you finish this, then read the chapter and it'll flow much easier than just opening and going, oh my gosh, what am I reading here? And you fall asleep for 20 minutes and you know, an hour goes by, you've, you've read a page and a half. This will, this will break the log down for you if, if you do it that way. And, and honestly, another reason why I have this assignment is that, that you know, the, the campuses have a, uh, there's lots of epidemics going on around here. One of them is that uh, people don't, don't read the textbook students don't read textbooks anymore uh so this is this is a way to the, so that somewhat forces you as a student to engage with the book otherwise you're not going to do well in this class but don't but don't sell yourself short and not read it okay these aren't these aren't horribly long chapters uh, i chose this book and i keep this book even though it's there's, there's a new edition but it's just more money uh, new stuff that we don't necessarily need. I keep this book because it's easily it's it's an it's an easier read than others. It's it's an interesting read than others also. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is for film reflections throughout the semester. So I will post a film. Instructions will have a have a uh, link to a film. Uh, I want you to watch the film. And again, please go to the uh, instructions uh, in modules week one to understand what they are but quickly they these are personal reactions i want your personal point of view i want i want you to tell me how it affected you emotionally and in it but i want you to present to me in an intellectual way and this is all in this in this never-ending uh journey of mine to help students what i what i call find their voice and this is something i've experienced so um the first film reflection uh, video tutorial will go much more into detail about that. So please watch that tutorial and read the instructions also, okay? <clears throat> okay, 16, there will be 16 supplemental lectures, eight before the midterm, eight before the final. Uh, so at, like I said before, I, I'm, I'm shocked by it, but this is typically where people uh, trip up in this class. Um, these are, this is not difficult. The instructors are not hard. Uh, so what is a supplemental lecture? Essentially, when I'm giving you a lecture, you're listening to the video, we're in chapter four, let's say, and I'm talking about, you know, and then the uh, the settlers moved west, boom. And then I say, okay, let's do a supplemental lecture right here. I'll tell you the number. This is supplemental lecture number four, for example, and this is about the uh, Mexican-American War. Okay, and there you go. So and there'll be a slide that will say supplemental lecture number four, Mexican-American War. That, I'm just using that as an example. There's one through one through eight for the midterm and then nine through 16 before the final. So the best way to approach these is, is take separate notes and keep them separate because you can use these notes for your final, uh, midterm and final. You can use the notes, okay? So what you, the best thing to do is write copious notes, write down everything that I say, uh, and because your essay portion of your midterm and final are based on these lectures, you choose three of these eight lectures from a reduced list of six. But the key, but the key component is it's a review, okay? It's not a research paper. I'm not asking you to take this, take this, this subject, Mexican-American War, and go out and 
final information. No, I, that's not what it is. I want you to review back to me what I said. Don't add things. Don't don't bring in any information. Don't go to Google and say that doesn't look like it's long enough. I'll make it longer. Don't don't do that. I'm going to repeat this so many times, but. Uh, understand that this is a review. So why do, why do I do that? Because you know there's there's lots of things you'll do when you're once you're out of college in in your life. And if you get a degree and get a nice job at the big company someday, they might they might decide to send you to cross the country to you know review some software that might be an integral part of your company's success. They send you to um, to go look at it. And the pressure's on, and you have to go fly across the country, sit down, um, you know, um, attend this presentation, and you're writing down copious notes so you can come back. You don't want to miss anything. You don't want to look bad to your company, but you also want your all your other fellow employees to understand how this works. So that's what you're doing. You're listening to the you're listening to my lecture. You're then reviewing what I said. So just like just like you and your job with this presentation with this software, you're not going to come back and add a bunch of stuff that the person that the presenter didn't say. You're not going to add it just to make it look good. That's where people go wrong here. Okay. Uh, so there's two places people go wrong here. One is that they don't they don't read the instructions at all. They just Google something and they throw it out there, and uh, that's plagiarism. That can get you in a lot of trouble, and people don't do well, and they're surprised they don't do well. Read the instructions. Second, they, they, they do it, but they add a whole bunch of stuff to make it bigger and better and, and look at me. And you don't have to impress me. I'm already impressed. Honestly, uh, you don't have to add to it, okay? Uh, you're simply reviewing what I said. Does that mean that I've said everything there is to say about that subject? Not even close. Does that mean you couldn't go on the internet and find, a, a, you know, a hundred things that, that are pertinent? You can. But if I didn't say it, it should be in there, okay? So again, another analogy. I'm spending a lot of time on this because we this is this is where people stumble. Another analogy: you and your best friend have a uh, have a hobby, and you're obsessed with it, and and you're you're both it's it's what it's what your friendship's based on, and you learn that the that the leading expert in um, spokesperson for the hobby is coming to your town and is going to give a presentation. So you and your friend are, are are you know all all excited, and we get to see the 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 guru of our hobby, and you both get tickets. But the day of the presentation, your friend is sick, and they tell you, "I can't believe this, but you've got to write down everything this man says, because I want to know exactly what he says." So you do that. You go to the, you're 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 a good friend. You you do your due diligence. You write everything down. You come home. You then don't go on the internet and add a bunch of stuff. You wouldn't do that, right? So again, same as before, don't add to it. Just simply tell me what the what review back to me what I said. So learning how to review something is a very important aspect of of a job, and especially if you ever if you go into scholarship and academics, you're going to be reviewing all the time. So this is an important thing to understand. So all all my assignments are kind of designed to do you know, a certain thing to, 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 to help you gain some skills that, of course, will lead you to success in your life, okay? So what I, everything I just said will be repeated in that uh, supplemental lecture uh, video tutorial, but please read those. Uh, please spend the time because these are, these are not difficult, but they are different. So uh, make sure you understand, you know, all the, all the steps that are required. And if you don't, let me know, okay? Two exams, um, uh, one at midterm, one at final, uh, 40 multiple choices, part one, the three essay questions that come from the supplemental lecture. So again, back to supplemental lectures, there's eight before the midterm. Study for the eight. When you take the midterm, I'm going to reduce the list to six. You then choose three, okay? Uh, so 40 multiple choices, part one, that, that's 40 minutes. And then the essay questions part two, that is 75 minutes. Um, the final will not be comprehensive the entire course. It will cover only the second half of the class. So you don't have to you know, study all the way back to the chapter one or whatever whatever the, your first chapter is. It's, it's just the second half, okay? Okay, grading. Um, here's the, it's all about points, 525 possible points, uh, 10, uh, 10 points per definition assignment per chapter. 
Uh, 100 points for four film reflex at 25 points. 120 points for the midterm. The final ramps up a little bit, 155 points. And I grade it across a, you know, just a typical um, percentage scale, okay? Uh, I don't curve grades. I, I don't do anything like that, okay? I just, um, it, it's, in, I just, in, in, in my mind, you either, you either know the percentage or you don't, okay? Always look at your, at, at, go to Canvas in the grade, see where you're at. It's your responsibility to let me know if there's something wrong there. Any disputes must be brought to my attention immediately. It is very easy to make a mistake as an instructor in Canvas. Sometimes you enter a grade and it jumps to somebody else and, and, and zeroes them out. Uh, I mean, I'm aware of it and I, I catch it most of the time, but once in a while it's, it's, it squeaks through. If there's ever any any kind of dispute about an assignment, and I like I allow you to turn in at a different time, and and you don't and, and you don't see the grade there, remind me because I I get inundated with student emails. Uh, it's not so bad in the summer. Um, you know I have a hundred and what 160 students, but in the fall it's 250. So I got a lot of people emailing me. So if if I tell you something, okay, I'll I'll, I'll change your grade. And it doesn't happen. Don't 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 be shy. Don't be afraid to say, "Hey, you didn't change my grade yet because it just got by me." Okay. Extra credit late work. I do not offer extra credit. I do not accept any late assignments. So that sounds pretty harsh. Well, it's not meant to be. In the past, this has just created a huge nightmare for me when I did do that. So what I've done is extended the length of time that these assignments are are due. So definition assignments are available for 10 days. Okay, they, they post on Fridays. They're due on, on the following, uh, a week from the following Sunday. You have 10 full days plus a week, two weekends to simply define a list of terms. Okay, uh, there's only one, t one chapter. The first, um, uh, I'm sorry, the last one uh, in this class is chapter 15. It's only available for three days because the class ends. There's no more time. So understand that. When we get there, I'll remind you, but you have 10 days for all these except the uh, last chapter, which is only three days, but it's only one chapter. And by that time, you should be a, a, a pro at this and you can knock that out. Uh, film reflections are available for 11 days. So they post on Fridays and they're due the, a week from the following Monday. So 11 full days, plus two weekend. That's 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 more than enough time to get these done. One exception for a fast track class, film reflection number one is already posted. It posts it on the 15th. And because that's the first day of class, I can't post it before that. It's due in seven days, the 22nd, just just one time. So with all, with all that time frame, there's no excuse to not finish an assignment in that given time. And my suggestion Always, always do the tough stuff first and work yourself way down to the easy stuff. Start early, finish early to avoid any last minute issues on the due date. I get people in a complete panic at 11.55 and my internet doesn't work and, and all, all these kinds of things. I understand, I'm, I'm gonna say it right here, okay? You're, um, if Canvas is down, that's not that's not an excuse to not turn your work. If Canvas is down, simply email it to me, fturner at sdccd.edu. Email to me. If if there's any doubt, email to me. I, I don't like it. I don't prefer it because I, if everybody did, I'd never get through my emails. But, you know, I don't want you to be, to, to lose out on points because of a malfunction with your internet or whatever it is. Email to me or, or. Um, you, you know, uh, instead of of Canvas, but 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 again, if if you're if you're trying Canvas on Wednesday and it's not due till Monday, don't don't email it on Wednesday. Keep trying until you can, because it'll it'll come around. Um, if it's if it's the if it's the day of the assignment that's due and you you got you know you're running out of time, email it to me. Simply just take take the fear out of it. Email it to me. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Okay, um, conflict resolution. I, I got to be honest. I have. I don't have a. I have not had a, a, a huge problem with this in my career here. I've had a few moments, but not very many. Uh, I, I tend to be, you know, uh, you know, open and upfront about what I'm asking, who I am, and I, I don't have a problem here. But you never know. Um, if there is a problem with your grades or any other matter in this class where you feel like you're not getting a fair share, fair shake of what, what's going on, I'm not being fair to you, 
please talk to me first. We will attempt to remedy the issue together. And I have had people come to me and say, hey, and we work it out. I've never had anybody walk away angry. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but um, not that I can remember anyway. But if that doesn't satisfy you, the next step is to contact the department chair. Uh, so I will give you that information and I'm not going to question you about it. I will give you the information without any without any hesitation. Uh, you will then contact the chair and uh, they will try to remedy remedy the issue. If it goes past that, if he if he or she can't do that, then I will you will be given the dean of the department's information and you will talk to to that person. Okay. So three steps. If you've been in the military, you understand the chain of command. You you you, you don't go to the commanding officer because the because the toilet backed up. You know you don't. There's a chain of command you go through. So don't go to the top. Start with me and work our way to the top. And at some point we will get the the problem remedied. And like I said, I've never had anybody go to part to, to uh, number two, number three before. Okay, don't be the first. I'm kidding. Uh, if you need to, go ahead and do it. I'm not worried about it. Okay, academic. Honesty, plagiarism, um, and that word is spelled incorrectly, but I'll fix that later. Um, so understand what this is. Well, well first of all, you got to be honest and ethical at all times. You can't be cheating, okay? So in this course, cheating, plagiarism in red, <clears throat> that's, that, that's the correct spelling. Disruptions of instructional activity, uh, it doesn't happen so much in an online class, but it, it, I guess it's possible. Fraud and or lying. I've experienced all of these will result in a minimum, at a minimum, a grade of zero for the assignment or tests that you, that you do that in with no makeup permitted. Uh, but if it's if it's really bad and, and it gets deeper, you know, it could result in an F in the course as well as formal disciplinary action taken by the Dean of Student Affairs and in, in, including being um, expelled from the school. So. It's your responsibility to maintain academic freedom, I'm sorry, integrity uh, in all your coursework. It's my responsibility. I mean, my job's in the line here. I can't just say, oh, don't worry about it. If I, if I come across this, I, this plagiarism, I, it's my job to, to report it, um, to, to, to keep my employment here, okay? Uh, so plagiarism, understand what it is. So, uh, you know, if I don't make it clear right now, contact me. But just in a nutshell, you know, students that don't, for and, and this this will typically happen with with um, supplemental lectures and on some sometimes film reflections where you don't watch you don't watch the film. That's my alarm. Sorry, you don't watch the film, so you're just gonna read a review on on the internet, and you cut and paste that and you submit it and say that that's your work. Well, that's not your work. That's the person that did the reviews work. You're you're telling me it's your work and you, you you plagiarize. You have to cite somebody if you use their work. So obviously, if you're going to cut and paste somebody else's work, you're not going to cite it to me. You, you're going to try to you hope it gets, it gets through me, okay? But that's what plagiarism is. But it's very very important that you you can't just go onto Google and cut and paste stuff and put it together and submit it. That's not that's not what we're doing here. So all my assignments are designed to to hinder that okay i mean it's easy for me to to tell when you're when you've done that supplemental lectures i, I know what i said in the, in the lecture film reflections you know uh not so easy but i can catch you with 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 unit check so what what is unit check when you submit your your essays um they're, they're scanned by unit check where anything that comes from a different website it'll tell me so you know typically some people have zero some have maybe six or seven percent when I when I get you know 30, 40, 50, 80 percent, that's that's not good. And I can simply go there and it'll show me all the websites you looked at, and boom. Okay, so you don't want to be that person. Okay, so don't do that. Plagiarism is very very important, and it's important to understand what it is, and and how uh, what the consequences of it are. Okay. Okay, academic accommodations. Uh, Students with disabilities who require accommodations must be approved by the office, uh, DSPS, Office of Disabled Student Services, first. So if you have a, an issue, uh, don't come to me. It's not, you know, will you allow me to have more time for my exam? I don't make that decision. DSPS does. You need to contact them. 
once once you've contacted them and they approve you, then they send me the form and then I give you the accommodation that you need, okay? So understand that if you have any kind of issue at all, um, DSPS is here to help you and, and help you through whatever whatever your challenge might be, uh, as well as, as, as myself. So um, for more information, you can go to their office on campus or their website. I can give you the link there, okay? Okay, to wrap it up, again, this is very important. It's your responsibility to drop this class before the drop deadlines if you're unable to finish the course. A grade will be assigned to every student who remains in the class roster after the drop deadline. So don't, don't be that person that stops, you know, doing work in week three where you can just get a W and then get an F because you didn't drop. Drop the class, okay? Okay, last but not least, uh, my soapbox moment, my commentary. So I'm just going to read this for the most part. The question is inevitably asked, how much of your lecture presentation is actually on an exam? Well, let's think about that. I mean, I've, I've had that question asked me. Uh, there are eight weeks in our course. If we take out the days used for the midterm and final, that is reduced to approximately seven weeks of instruction. Uh, if we multiply that by six hours of instruction per week, that is 42 hours of instruction. The midterm and final will amount to three hours or, or so of our time. How do I fit 42 hours into three hours? I can't. So everything I say will not be on exam. But I'm not going to tell you. Uh, this is What I'm going to say right now is going to be a question, but in the next 10 minutes is not. I, I'm not here to... to to get you to pass an exam, I'm here to teach you this class about this this story as I know it. So a lot of it, you know, is not going to be testable, but that's not my purpose. My purpose there's there's also a, a requirement of a certain amount of hours that a, a student's required to attend in a class. Okay, so that's I I don't know how to answer that question. It becomes obvious that getting everything I say to you into an exam is impossible. Students will sometimes ask me. Will what you are about to talk about be on exam? So that's difficult for me to answer uh, because obviously much of what I say will not be on exam. So from my perspective, that, that this is how you get around all that and take the, take the anxiety, the stress out of all of this point of view. The best approach for students is take it all in. Learn all you can. Be diligent. Listen to the videos, read the chapters, ask questions. That's how you do it. That's how you get good grades. You don't have to be a, everybody's a, uh, has the ability to be a great student. Some people are using skills and gain skills, some aren't. But the ones that aren't simply have to learn them and then you'll be a, a top uh, student also. There, there aren't smarter people than others. There's people that work harder and that's what this is all about, okay? Uh, so if you approach, it that way, and talking about your education, if you approach it that way and the exams in this class, you won't have to worry about them. You'll know all there is to know. This course is designed by me to teach you the story of the United States history. The best approach for you to take is to learn it well, as it what this is this is very important. It will help you discover that many of the issues and conflicts we have today, streets are on fire right now, have their beginnings in the past. But history is an extremely relevant subject regarding the present. As far as uh, you know, social interaction and community and culture, there, there's no other subject in, in, your, in your entire uh, college career that will teach you that more than history. That's what we do, okay? Uh, so this is the lecture part, or, or uh, per, perhaps the parental part. The, the best approach to education is not to figure out an easy way, look for shortcuts, but to embrace it and let it let it do its magic. That that sounds a little idealistic and kind of kind of maybe it's a, maybe that's a little lame to you. I, I can tell you from from personal history, I've done both. I've looked for shortcuts and 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 it, it took me down the wrong road every time. But when I got serious and, and focused, I, I I flourished as a student. Okay. Uh, the combination of all your classes together is designed to enlighten you and to remove any blinders you may be wearing regarding life. If you allow this to happen and work as hard as you can, I can assure you that the benefits game will be invaluable and priceless for the rest of your life. So you hear the idea, I can just kind of skate, uh, C gets the degree. And I hear that a lot. And that's true, perhaps. I don't know if, it, if it's, I don't know that many students have done it, but possibly. Um, but what the, the the problem with that is is you're not 
putting your best effort in and it's going to show. So maybe you get the degree, but when you have that job interview, that great job that you've been focused on and why you went to college, now I'm here and you got five people interviewing the, the, the people that did their, you know, put their time in and, and learn and enlightened because they're educated, you know, it, getting education is not just about getting a job, getting education enlightens you and, 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 and raises your level of, of, of comprehension about the world and what's going on around you. This is what education means. Yeah, it gets you a job, but you're not going to do well in that job if you don't have the other with it also, okay, because educated people are who they're looking for. What is an educated person? A person that spent four years uh, and, you know, at, at self-sacrifice to get through a rigorous course of study, and they did that. That, that says a lot about you. That's that's why college degrees pay more money because it's not just about your knowledge of the subject. It's about that you've done that. You've 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 accomplished that that uh, you know, that that uh, that whole thing. But all, all that all those classes, all those years, all those tests, all those deadlines. You've done it all, and you did it to where a professor says that, that you were it proficient or better. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Let it do its magic. Just, just dig in and and work hard and and let it flow over you. I know I'm being dramatic, but I can tell you I've experienced it. A combination of all your classes together is designed to enlighten you and remove any blunders you may be wearing regarding life. You know, people people tend to be narrow-minded because no one's ever taught them how to take the blinders away and, and look at the periphery. There's a lot of things going on out there. It's not just a, a, a narrow focus all the time. Education will, will widen your perspective about life in general. Uh, if you allow this to happen and work as hard as you can, I can assure you that the benefits gain will be invaluable and priceless for the rest of your life. I've lived that. That's my credo right there. Essentially, high school is adult training. It teaches you the very basics so one can maneuver through society without any obstacles you you know that you can you can get a job you can vote you can buy a car you can move someplace but that's it college will teach you to handle the complexities of life and allow you to pursue careers that require higher knowledge and and that's you know management jobs supervision jobs jobs that pay more money that's what college will give you. So it's so it's a it's a double-edged sword, uh, enlightenment and of course you know the the ability to to uh, manage people. That's most of the college graduates become many times end up in management. This will result in living a life that is full, challenging, and rewarding. But most importantly, it will result in a life that is satisfying. The key ingredient to happiness. Okay. You think education is, is expensive? Try ignorance. Okay. Okay, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you.